Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna be doing this haircut today. It is my big 90s bob. It's got sort of a Eon Flux, Molly Ringwald, kind of legendary, big, big, big volume, big graduation. Um, and I'm gonna show you just the way to go about it. Pretty classic shape, but with a couple little twists. And let's get started. As we're gonna think of it in like a house, if you see here. <laughs> um, it has the foundation, and then it has the walls, and now it has the roof. Um, so we're gonna break this bob down in those three ways. Think of, think of it in three different areas. The nape, and then the back and sides, the walls, and then the stuff on top, the roof, if you will. A roof? How do you say it? I don't know. Um, but go ahead and get started on it, and let's check it out. Whee! Okay, here's our sectioning. We're gonna break it down into three of those areas like we talked about. The nape area, which I have separated on a diagonal line. I wanna pick the slope that I want the base of my bob to sit at to match the line here. So if it's really extreme, that's okay. If it's more square or even inverted, that's okay. Just let this line be the dictator and then when we cut, we'll match that line there. Now I'm sitting down, I really highly recommend doing that with bobs. The older I get, right, I'm 43 now, the easier it is to get it perfect, get it right, and then be less sore. So I really recommend it. And go ahead and tilt your head forward. This is a big key. And you wanna just get a slight diagonal forward. If it gets really, really extreme, it can change the way things fall. So just a slight push forward will do. Then guide everything down. I'm gonna use the back of my hand to pet this hair into place. Comb from the top and really round down with it. Then you can really see what's going on. I like the finer teeth. I'm using this longer comb. It's the Sam Via's, let's see, what's the number? 30017. I will be able to see where that hairline is and maybe you wanna peek through there and sneak in and see, well, how high up is the hairline and how far down do I need to stay? It's a good idea to ask that question. That's a good reference point too. Sometimes it's hard to find like a length guide, but if you can give a specific reference, do you want it at the hairline? Do you want it a little below the hairline, a little above? I have some of those too. So then starting dead center, I'm gonna just trap the hair down and point cut to get started and knock off some of this length. And I'm gonna just work in little tiny sections about as wide as your finger would be. Oop. It's only a little bit at a time. And I just wanna take as I work out and then out. So I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna work my way to the left. I don't necessarily want this blunt, blunt, blunt baseline right now. I'm looking for more like a shattered baseline. So that's why I'm point cutting. If you want a blunt baseline, that's okay. You're just gonna take this stuff straight off. But let's go ahead and come in point cut. And one thing I wanna point out though, is as I cut, naturally my blade coming from the top will work better. What I mean is if the top of this section is getting hit, it'll be cutting towards the base. But if my blade's coming from underneath, sometimes it lifts up from the side, you can see it better. So if I'm cutting, cutting, cutting here, you can see it starts to come up, 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 up. You may need to go old school and flip it back around and point cut from the top down if you're point cutting. Take all that hair and guide it up to the snug of the nape. Sometimes I'll just come through, knock the base off and then switch the scissor in my hand. This is a trick that was taught to me by Hugo. If you take your scissor and what would classically hold it and move the thumb only and flip it upside down. <laughs> and then with your thumb and pointer finger, grab the crane handle or grab that little offset handle Finger goes in the ring, finger goes on the tang, and now my middle finger does the movement. So I can come back and get from the top of this comfortably and move just that middle finger, and the blade gets smack in the top. And you can tell I, I kind of get a little out of control sometimes with how hard I'll smack down on it. Um, so control is better. If, you, if you're not totally comfortable with it yet, just go slow, get little pieces at a time. The thing I like about it though, is that I can actually get a ton of really fast, I call it chops. <laughs> so if you're looking for flips, again, it's okay to have the scissor be like the blades coming up a lot. Meaning the blades coming up from the bottom and smacking its way through your baseline from the bottom up. That will make it stand up and flick out a little bit more. You can see it just kind of makes it raise out just slightly more. So if you want to control and contain, you go down. Tell you the truth is most of my bobs get a combination of both. It's coming in from the top surface to contain and trap the hair down. And then maybe I wanna raise up slightly so I come in from underneath to pick the hair up off of the skin. 
and have it float a little more. You can see it does it each time. So at first, we're gonna create that baseline and bring it back to static. And you can see your line overall. It, it works best to kind of, when you comb, comb down and back around your hand and then back under path. The back of my hand does a lot of my like touching of the bob hair, the nape hair anyways, I should say. And kind of find it and push it into place and look at where you're standing. Is it long anywhere? Is it short anywhere? Is your baseline even where you want it across? Okay, that'll be my baseline. So this is gonna be my like an initial foundation. So like on the house that we discussed, it would be the concrete or the flooring of the building. Everything from here would be built off of that. Just like in a house, you would not start with a roof. <laughs> okay, so I want to put a little graduation. It's like I got everything cut down blunt and she's inverted at this point, looking forward. And I want to take this hair and pull it straight out from where it lives. Look at the hair's direction. Follow it coming up straight off the top, I want it at 45. So top of that nape area, I mean, occipital bone area. Take it straight off at 45 and then right there, lock my fingers onto the head. So I'm holding onto it and I got my position. I look into my mirror, so you'll be my mirror. I can look into that position and claim exactly that it's at 45, good. I got my finger angle matching my section. Look underneath and I will see a very specific, and I have to move this to bring it toward you, but you see a very specific guide underneath there. It comes up in a blunt square line. Can it be seen? I believe it can, there. So that square line is where I will initiate my change with this graduation. Take it all to there, hold it, look underneath, find my obvious sharp line, that's my guide, and I'm gonna do it to this whole top section. Keep your hand locked on there so my fingers stay on the neck so my I don't pick it up and push it around again. Keep your fingers locked on there. Comb to your hand in a locked position. And you're gonna have just a barely small amount on this inside corner to take. It'll have less on the outside than it did in the center. And that's good. We are gonna take that same line that we have started here on both sides, the diagonal, and we're gonna communicate it to the next level up, the walls. I want them to move towards the front. So they're coming out and around, moving forward. So I'm choosing a line that would make it move that way. If I wanna make it any steeper or stuff as I go, I would start to increase my line right here, or perhaps I wanna get more square towards the middle. I don't know. You can do anything that you would like to do. But just understand that whichever direction you choose, if you were to roll a marble on it, like Sam says, which way would it go? That's the direction the hair will flow. So let's take these sections down. I'm gonna go into fast pace. Fingers are tapped onto the neck and I'm elevating to 45 degrees, making sure that that's the plane that I'm on. I'll turn it to the side in a sec so you can see a little better. Go underneath and I'll see my guide. There. I'm gonna match that line exactly. Make sure that your finger angle is matched up to the line that you see. And you're gonna just follow that same form across that whole plane. If it's too wide to get it all in just a half of a section, you may have to break it down. And just go as wide as your finger is. Go up to that second knuckle with a little bit of guide inside of your hand. The left side, same exact thing. Carry on all the way up to the top of the crown. your hand up to the edge of your cut line, just slightly back an eighth of an inch away from your cut line, maybe a quarter, and then drop to it, lock it. And now I'm gonna rest my blade underneath. So my blade is gonna rest on my ring finger so I can be more stable. Now I jumped over to the other side. I'm on now on the left. And look at your line overall that you have sitting, your the line that's at the bottom of the bob. And you're gonna just transmute that, boom, and put it again. Down. You're gonna take the back half of the section, elevate your hand out, up and off, look at your angle underneath, and then now you're ready for the roof. If you're talking about bobs these days, a lot of the excitement's happening like right in here. And so I'm gonna take just the very center, little tiny bitty baby piece, and come to the very center and put my scissor coming down from the top and fold it completely. So it's gonna close all the way about chin length and I just take all that hair away. So it got me a little bitty baby piece. That's a little bit longer than chin. Let's take a little bit more, but still the same fashion. 
there. That's about chin length. And then I'm gonna go to the opposite side. Take that piece with the one that I just cut, and there it is. Scissors folding all the way through that section. And now I have a guide on each side, a little on the left and a little on the right. You notice you don't take like and make a blunt line to start because it's hard to get it out, right? It's like starting with the dissolved line. Got everything else playing in the heavy, like principled rules, but we want this front to be a little bit more playful. And then we're gonna take each side and direct it across. So the right side goes opposite of where it lives. I'm gonna direct it all the way over here. And when I slide past my guide, it'll fall out. Oh, there it is. These little bits underneath just came out. That's my length overall. So at that point, I'm gonna start cutting inside my hands and I'm gonna fold the scissor all the way through that section, everything being directed opposite to where it lives. So the whole right goes to the left, the whole left goes to the right. And just keep going. And then everything in your hand should be soft and loose. If you notice that there's one that looks chunky, there's a good chance that there's something chunky on there. But if you look in your hand, it looks loose, looks soft, you're probably gonna melt out and disappear out into like this long nothing bang. And that's really what I'm looking for. I want it to be long. So I'm gonna take this to the opposite side. I gotta switch my body, be right back. I'm gonna take that across from where it lives. Make sure that you comb this flat. You want it to be comb underneath, distribute the hair flat, right? And then slide, slide, slide. Let the, even the hand be looser than usual for you. Meaning you're not gripping it too tight. That's my overall guide. Cut from the back to front. I gotta sneak my fingers out of that scissor. If my fingers are poking through hard, I have to turn to cut. So I gotta sneak my fingers back out as much as I can get flush with the section. Grab my guide, make sure I know it. All the way across this. It becomes much like the action of a razor, sliding up and down on that. But instead of having the direct impact of the razor blade, you have the open and closing of a scissor blade and it just has less friction, less restriction on the, I guess the surface uh, texture of the hair once you're done. It still has that soft wispy airiness of a razor. There's no chunks. Mucho. Muy. Now that we have that whole baseline put in and that front fringe, you can see what ends up happening. This little leftover tail kind of builds up right in the very front and I like it. It blends in with all the rest, and if you need to come back to front and just put like little sister lengths, that's okay, but make sure that that little piece resides a little bit longer, a little, it's nice. With the sectioning that remains, we have these two top, the left and the right, what would be the like crown and top area. And take both of those down, and I sit back down in my chair so that I stay at that 45 degree elevation. By nature, if I'm standing up, I lift it up, so. I like to sit down. And I'm gonna have that inside guide length, that stuff there is how long it is. This is what I need to cut. So I slide past it and I observe what that length is. I go inside my hand here, cutting like razor style, just small little closes. I keep working back till I get to the high point of the head. I direct this section forward and down, 45 degrees. And I'm gonna cut inside of my hands. My guide line is still at that center in the front. I'm gonna kind of come over the top here. You can see my guide inside my hand here. I'm cutting toward the outside surface. So I'm cutting from the in to the out. Complete closes of the scissor all the way across all the little beads. And it should be chasing from shortest in the middle to longest toward that outside. Get a nice push back toward my overall length. Now this stuff back here I have not cut yet. My guideline length is here. Out here in the middle, the shortest piece. And I'm gonna diagonal my fingers and slide out past the hair. Recheck the guide length in the middle and cut inside my fingers working out. Completely close the scissor. By the time it gets to your finger, it's already all the way closed. So well, now I have that front stuff done and I'm gonna take that length overall. It's cut up to the high point of the head. See if we can see a better view. Nice. It comes from the high point of the head. That's all my layering and it ends here at this front drop. 
So I still have all this length that's coming from the crown area over the top and back, and I wanna knock that off. But just make sure that you don't get this stuff just yet. I'm gonna work from center forward. Take it down, 45 degrees. Look for my guide, exactly square. So the right side done, you can see my drop, and then there's that little extra that I have that's coming from the fringe. I wanna connect those now. I'm gonna just turn it to get a better view. Lean the head out slightly. Take everything from that right side back so you can see where the face is. And I'll have a little drop disconnection in the front. Make sure I get up to that 45 degrees again. You'll see my blunt line underneath, and then all of a sudden there erupts this like soft drop and I need to connect those points. But I wanna leave that point at the front just slightly longer and even bust through a little bit differently. Now that drop will have just a little bit of a variation from the rest. And we'll, after I style it, we'll check it out a little better. Okay, so here it is after the blow dry, you see big, huge volume. The graduation in the back is hefty. The way that stacks up and builds up is really big. A big, giant, full, heavy graduation, and I want to eliminate a little bit of that weight. So here's how we do that. So I'm taking out just the hair at the nape first. And I want to lay that hair down, make sure it's nice and beveled under. And it's gonna do a very small tap. So the scissor only closes the tiniest touch and it only opens the tiniest touch. And just tap off the edge of what's there. So I mean, don't go deep in, don't go chopping away, just take off just the tiniest touch of each layer. And if you need more, you can pick it up, take it out to that elevation of 45 degrees and point cut in. The deeper you go, the looser it gets. So the heavier it is, the deeper you wanna be. Still take it to that 45 degrees each time. When it lightens up, you don't want it to like fly away. You want it to get lighter. All right. Rest it on your finger here, the scissor. And as it gets lighter and lighter, you can go less and less deep or I like to mix it up and go super deep and then go a little shallower, deep, shallow, deep, shallow. Take a combination. Depends on how th thick the hair is. Take these diagonal lines though, like as you're working down. You know, it's not a perfect section, that's okay, it doesn't matter. Just pick up at 45, and you're gonna point cut in deep. The deeper I go, the lighter it gets, so as the hair gets longer, you can go deeper and deeper. Each time you take a little bit more, and maybe you do both to each section. So I'm skimming off the top surface. Maybe you don't see that, but there's like four, five, six, ten hairs falling at a time. So if you want to come back the opposite direction, over the top like this. Another option, if you've gone through both of those and it's still really, really thick and you want to do it with a, a different scissor, I always go for the Invisiblan in this case. Now the Invisiblends have this ability to just kind of disappear into the hair. Open and close that scissor. I'm working with just the base. If you're working on the left side, drift it <clears throat> to the right. If you're working on the right side, drift it to the left. And come back in and just open and close. Move yourself along as you open and close. Don't camp in one spot. The more you do, the lighter it gets. So don't go overboard, don't overdo. As I work my way to the top surface, I usually need less and less to be removed. If you want your bob to really bevel under, you can go all the way super strong with your blade down and it'll make the hair more apt to flip down and under. Uh, conversely, if you do it the other way, meaning like if I go in and flip my blade up, there's more likely that that's gonna make that hair whip up and stand up. I want it to go under, especially down on this baseline stuff. I want it to all go under, so I cut my bevel under. Okay, so here she is. 
We got the big 90s bob, kind of Molly Ringwald, heavy duty volume, big graduation buildup of weight to like a disrupted sort of front that likes to twist and twirl because of the disconnection in it. Everything following a 45 degree heavy duty graduation build, except for this top front. That and up to the high point of the head was directed forward and cut in that V pattern in the front. Cutting inside of our hands with the 13600, that is the classic uh, Sam Via Sear, Shear. So I'm holding the hair and cutting inside of my hands a lot like I would be using cutting a razor. That's why I like that little bit shorter blade. Also try the five and a half, sick for like a little bit less space or shorter hair you can get in tighter. And also in the mix today, we're using the dry cutting clips. These are the ones that come essential when you are cutting on hair that you don't want to dent or bend. Uh, the difference is I can grab a piece, pick it up, pull it back, leave it there for a few minutes, and then take it out and it doesn't have any dent in it because of that little rubber band. So do yourself a favor, get some new gear, get some new stuff, check out Sam Via. Uh, I'm Roger Molina Hair, and you also can get 10% off of all Sammy stuff with my code Roger Molina Hair. Um, I know 10% ain't much, but hey, if you're buying scissors, that's a lot. So thank you guys again for watching. Thank you, Sam Via, for having me. Again, uh, get yourself into the education out there live. Looking forward to seeing everybody out there and come up and say hi. Give me a, like a, uh, uh, what's up, Raj? And I'm stoked to be here. Thanks, and see you again. Yaska.